Hello, in this video I will show you how I made a software using MATLAB for designing a grounding grid for power substation. As a starting point in this subject, we will rely on international standard or IEEE standard 80-2000. This is standard mainly talking about AC substation grounding or how I can design a power a grounding grid. So if the watcher of this video is not familiar with the basic or advanced concept of uh, grounding grid design for power substation, just google IEEE standard 80-2000, download this standard, reading it, you will be familiar with basic and advanced concept of this subject. So after reading this standard, you will find that the basic or starting point for designing a grounding grid for power substations is taking the actual measurements of the substation land. By actual measurements, I mean the soil resistivity of the substation land. In theory, usually we are assuming that the grounding or the earth itself has a potential of zero volt. So we are using it as a reference point. But in actual life, this is incorrect. Since the, the ground itself or the earth itself or the land of the substations cons uh, consists of many ingredients like soil, uh, we can say like other materials like rocks. So the behavior of the earth when we are passing current through it will be different from area to another. Now the question, how we can measure the soil resistivity of the substation land? There is a common method called four electrode or four electrodes method or what they called it winner method. In this method there is many there are many commercial devices used for uh, this work. This device or the basic concept of the soil resistivity measuring device or the four electrodes method is by inserting four rods in the substation lead. The outer two electrodes in this sketch, they are A and B, they are mainly for injecting current. So here we are assuming that the current will be injected in electrode A. It will be passed through the earth itself, close the circuit by electrode B. The two inner electrodes, mainly we are using them to measure the voltage. So by injecting a known current and measuring the drop voltage between the inner electrodes means we know how much we inject the how much the injected current and we will measure the voltage drop between the inner electrodes so we can find how much the resistance or the resistivity of the soil let's take this uh, table this table showing how we make how we made the uh, soil resistivity measurements using MEGAR device so in this case we are using uh, many directions for example many directions and distance so in x direction by x direction here I mean let's take this is our reference point since this is the reference point we will put the electrodes in the x direction so the distance will be 3 meter by 3 meter we mean that the distance between the two inner electrodes will be 3 meter then the distance between this electrode and the outer electrode will be 3 meter it means in general the distance between any electrode and its adjacent electrode will be 3 meters so referring to the same table, here we are changing the distance or increasing the distance from 3, 5, 7, 10. So now the question, why we are increasing the distance? By this sketch, we can see that the current will pass 
from the outer electrodes or from electrode A to electrode B through many layers of the earth itself but the voltage uh, the voltage drop will be measured for the nearest path for the current so in order to know the soil resistivity of the upper and lower layers of the earth itself I will increase the distance by increasing the distance so let's consider electrode A is here and electrode B is here so the current path it will take a long distance or in fact the arc of the current path it will be increased this means the voltage measured or the voltage drop measured it will represent the soil resistivity of the lower layer of the grounding earth so after taking many measurements with different distances we can know uh, what is the best layer for laying down the grounding grid so in case so in case here we can say that the resistivity when the distance is three, uh, three meter is one uh, 105 ohm per uh, ohm per meter so when the distance is 10 it's 106 means we can consider here the earth or the soil of the substation is homogeneous since increasing the distance uh, uh, giving us uh, measurements approximately same but it changing the location let's say that we are taking uh, many points or testing points for example let's take this uh, test point we can say that on a three meters we are reading 62 ohm meter but on 10 meters we are reading 144 in this case we can immediately conclude that the lower layer of the soil or, or sorry of the earth it's uh, of the earth or the land of the substation has more uh, has more resistivity than the upper one so it's better to lay down the grounding grid on the upper layer so after completing this part means we are ready for starting the design of the power substation grid for this purpose I made a custom code using MATLAB here is the main window or GUI for this purpose so the basic data which I have to enter them to the program first measured soil resistivity or meter measured soil resistivity means after taking many measurements on uh, different location on the substation land I will sum all together and I will take the average so let's assume here that the average of uh, measured soil resistivity is 75 ohm meter now also uh, we are talking here about measured asphalt or uh, rocks layer resistivity in fact we are not measuring this one all designers they are assuming it as a 3000 based on the IEEE standard so this one you can consider it as a fixed value and also after reading the IEEE standard you will be familiar about the asphalt or uh, rocks layer resistivity because in general after completing the substation building and it will be ready for energization the upper layer of the substation usually it will be asphalt or it will be from rocks or gravel now the second input it will be the distance between asphalt and the ground level usually a ground level of the substation will be higher than the asphalt uh, level why this is in uh, this is to protect the substation from the water because in case it will the substation will be built in uh, a heavy uh, rainy area so it there will be um, a chance that the water to enter the substation so usually they are making a distance of 10 centimeters between the ground level of the substation and the outer level or the asphalt level of the substation so it depends on the design of the substation here I assumed it 0.1 or 10 centimeters because this value is generally used in Saudi Arabia 
Now thickness of the asphalt or uh, rock layer it's also 10 cm. This is also based on the standard of Saudi Electricity Company here. Now after that the depth of a grid under asphalt road. Now the depth of the grid it depends on the client specification. This is the first point and second point it depends on the soil resistivity measurements. As I previously mentioned in case uh, by increasing the distance between electrodes while, me while measuring the soil resistivity we found uh, and if we found that the, uh, you can say the lower layer of the substation ground or earth has less resistivity in this case it's better to lay down the grounding grid more the, uh, we it's better to lay down the grounding grid in much higher distances down the substation so usually in Saudi Arabia we are using a depth from 0 0.5 because it's a minimum value as per Saudi electricity company specification up to 1 meter so I will assume it's 0 0.8 now let's talk about the length of the area means the length of the substation area here I assumed it's 80 meter width it will be 60 meter now the second point it will be regarding the diameter the used diameter for the electrodes here in Saudi Arabia as per uh, Saudi electricity company specification we are using electrodes minimum by 0 0.02 uh, meter diameter and the length 3 meter now let's talk about the system data system data here uh, we are talking about the maximum fault current maximum fault current for high voltage substation I mean 132 kV power substation it's 40 kilo amp for one second but it depends on the client and the country which we are going to design the substation grounding grid now the last section it's talking about the current division factor the current division factor after reading the IEEE standard you will find that when a short circuit will be passed through the grounding grid part of this fault current it will be consumed by the ground but the remaining part it will be circulating inside the grounding grid so for in order to know how much of uh, current will be consumed by the earth and how much the remaining current which will be circulating inside the grounding grid we have to enter number of uh, transmission lines and number of distribution lines number of uh, transmission lines and distributions line how we can decide it for example let's take a single line diagram of one substation for example this 132 kV substation over 13.8 here we have first incomer second incomer spare and spare so we will forget the spares so in this substation I have two incomers so again I will go I will enter number of transmission lines as two number of distribution lines since I have three step down transformers so number of distribution lines will be three now after entering those basic basic data I am ready for designing a grounding a grid you uh, based on IEEE 82000 so here we go here the software is uh, trying to find the uh, uh, optimum number of a grounding a grid electrodes and uh, the spacing here the result before going to this uh, graph I will go to the results from the software here are so the current division factor calculated current division factor it's 0 0.2 almost 0 0.25 what is the meaning of this this uh, this means that 25 percent of the uh, short circuit current it will be circulating inside the grounding grid while the remaining 75 percent of the grounding uh, of the fault current will be consumed by the earth so again let's go back here we enter that the maximum fault current is 40 kilo amp by 40 kilo amp means uh, 10 kilo amps will be circulating inside the grounding grid 
and 30 kilo amp will be consumed by the earth itself so here the second calculated parameter it's the permissible touch voltage permissible touch voltage means uh, how much the touch voltage I will not go in details because after reading the IEEE standard you will be familiar with all of, the, of these concepts like the touch voltage step voltage so here the permissible touch voltage 600 approximately 650 volt the step voltage it's around 2100 the attainable touch voltage it's 648 means it less than the permissible touch voltage uh, step voltage 322 uh, also it's less than the permissible the grounding resistance is 0 0.5 now length of the grid 80 meter by 60 meter and the grid spacing between conductors it will be 10 meters and number of used rods or electrodes is 72 so here we can find a 3D presentation representation so first of all here is the ground level the ground level we can see it's at zero level now the distance between the ground level and the asphalt layer it's 10 centimeters since we already entered this value then the thickness of the asphalt layer is also 10 centimeters this is from our input data and the depth of the grounding grid from 0 0.2 to 1 it's 80 centimeter and here is the grounding grid the grounding grid the distance between one line and second line it will be 10 meters so by using this software I can easily taking uh, the measurement or sorry taking the input basic data and measure a power substation grounding a grid thank you for watching